Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Glenn and today we're looking at intrusive igneous rock. So these are rocks that are formed under the ground from baffleif or what people know as lava. So it's molten rock and we have granite, granodiorite, diorite, gabbro and peridotite. And this is the entire suit of igneous rock that forms underground you don't get any extremes outside of this range uh, if you get 100% quartz then uh, it's really just the quartz if you get 100% gabbro then it's a periotype and that's basically the end of the series so as you can see the first thing you can tell is that they start from a light color and they go up to pretty much an almost black color so these are the two extremes and this rock is mostly olivine and pyroxene so that's why it is a dark color you may have a little bit of plagioclase but generally doesn't have any orthoclase or quartz uh, and doesn't have any uh, muscovite or type mica or amphibole this is rhyolite or granite so the Extrusive equivalents of these rocks, you can't really tell the crystal structure. So that's why the intrusive is uh, is really a better educational tool to look at the chemistry. So the granites usually have orthoclase, uh, plagioclase, quartz, muscovite, biotite, mica, amphibole, and it's a light color. So the dark color is generally the uh, amphiboles. The muscovite and biotite makers. And if we look closely at it, you can see the grey colour is the quartz. So, so we've got quartz, all this light colour here is the plagioclase. The dark is more than likely amphibile. And as you can see in the makers, uh, that usually is reflective. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to tell. And yeah, can't really see any, but you should be able to see it under greater magnification. So, greater for magnification, and uh, this is 2.8 times, and I still don't see any, uh, but it will be there anyway. Then we have granodiorite. So this one has less orthoclase and more sodium or uh, rich plagioclase. So orthoclase is the um, potassium rich feldspar. Then you've got quartz. So you can see the quartz here. The quartz does. Uh, start to decrease in this series. Uh, the biotype muscovite, so the micas are pretty much the same as the granites. And the crystals might be smaller. And as you can see, we have a lot more amphibole, so the dark colored. And where you get this uh, Texture here usually for this um, impurities, or it could even be where the rock has started to disintegrate. So, this is the weathered surface up here. Can you see any uh, micas? No, oh, yes, I did. There, there's a mica there. So, that looks like muscle right mica. Biotite's usually brown, muscle usually black. And there's some more micas there. Oh, yeah, so maybe I need to put it in a certain surface area. I uh, still don't see any on the granite. Yeah, so maybe there's no uh, no planes that can reflect the light. Anyway, so you can see the differences between these two rocks. This one's lighter, this one gets a bit darker, and they're starting to break down. Then we have diorite. 
the diorite has more plagia clays. Uh, but this is where you get pyroxene to start intruding. And at least 40% is amphibole and pyroxene. Some uh, micas, but the micas are starting to disappear. So you can see it looks like there's some micas there. Some micas. At least dark colour is hard to distinguish between amphibole and pyroxene. Uh, pyroxene does increase. Amphibole does decrease. And the quartz is pretty much disappeared. You can still see some quartz, uh, but most of the light colour is the plagioclase. And off clays has pretty much disappeared. And it can still be there. So if we have a look at the granodiorite and the diorite, you can see the differences. And if we include the granite, you can see the different colours in those rocks. So that is the first three. Then we got Gabbro. So Gabbro includes hell of a lot more pyroxene and uh, plagioclase. So they're the two main crystals that make up the structure. So the light colour is plagioclase and the dark colour is the pyroxene. Uh, you can get some quartz, some micas, uh, amphiboles decreasing. And olivine is starting to increase. Olivine is the, the uh, green colour. And... That is, uh, there's a large mica crystal there. Um, but as you can see, it's reflective, so it has extinction. And that's a nice rock. So if we have a look at it between diorite, oops, see that's, that's eroded surface, it's a bit hard to tell. Okay, diorite and gabbro. You can see the gabbro looks a bit lighter than the diorite. Uh, that's more than likely because the crystals in the gabbro are a bit larger than the crystals in the diorite. So, and the last rock we have is the peridotite. And this is mostly pyroxene and olivine. You might get some plagioclase and amphibole. More than likely not. Uh, but the crystals in this one are very small. Uh, so, even if you magnify it, you can't really see. So, it's 3.7 times, and I don't really see any crystal structure in that. Uh, here's the, looks like that's the weathered surface. Yeah. So, to get a peridotite with a larger crystal structure uh, because pyroxene and olivine are dark crystals olivine is usually a yellow or greenish yellow this is probably has a high content of pyroxene I would say if probably an olivine probably less than usually it's about 50-50% in the middle so this is probably towards the low end of the olivines, probably like 20-30%. And if we look at it compared to the granite, you can see there's a marked difference. This one is mainly a lot of quartz and olive, olive, <laughs> off clays, I mean. Uh, this one has none of it at all, so that's why it is a dark colour. So... That is how you can tell between the entire series of rocks. Also, you need to know the context of these rocks. So you need to know the locality. Or, I've got these as, as part of an educational series. So these have been guaranteed by a geologist to be the rocks that they say they were. And a little bit of education, uh, you'll be able to tell... The differences between the actual rocks uh, except for this one that one looks like yeah there's a basalt yeah you can get it confused with a basalt um, whatever here's a mudstone yeah you can probably get it confused with a mudstone so you need context you need to know the geology of the area to understand what type of rock is 
at that area. And uh, well, you can also get this confused with uh, this one is a hornfowl's. So I've got this other uh, locality, which I knew the geology of. And the color looks a bit different. You, you know, if you're not experienced, you wouldn't really know that. Anyway, I hope this helps you with the plutonic rocks that you can find around the world. Where I live, uh, the only rocks that we can find are the granodiorite and granite. The diorite, gabbro and peridot are. I'd have to travel quite a long way to actually get any samples of those in the field. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my video. And uh, leave a comment down below. Thank you and goodbye.